It all started with a bowl of cereal. I used most of the remaining milk and my wife couldn't make her morning coffee. Her day was ruined and I was at fault. To make it up to her, I swung by the store after work and picked up milk. When I opened the fridge, however, she had already got milk. Now we have two gallons of milk in the fridge, furthering my shame. You could chalk it all up to human error. After all, we didn't put milk on the shopping list even though we were low. I could have told my wife that I had used most of the milk, and we could have communicated about who was going to the grocery store. In the book, The Design of Everyday Things, Don Norman posits that human error is usually a result of poor design. Humans err continually. It's an intrinsic part of our nature. What he means by this is if you see a lot of errors being made, it's very likely that the system needs to be changed, not the humans. Analyzing the problems, they all point back to a lack of knowledge about the inventory. Now, before we roll out an enterprise inventory management system, you have to remember we are still in my kitchen. So let's keep it simple. Let's consider the following system. At the garbage can, we place a barcode reader. When the food has been consumed and the container is being thrown away, you scan the barcode and the item is automatically added to the shopping list. This solution is way better than the current process. However, it does have some downsides. How do you manage determining which items were a one-time purchase and which ones are continuing? What happens if you forget to scan it or throw it out somewhere else? What happens when you go to use some ingredient and only a small, kind of useless amount of it is left? These problems can be addressed by a small change to the system. The barcode can be moved to a card that is attached to the item. Crucially, this card contains one additional piece of information, an order quantity. At or below this quantity, the card is removed from the item and scanned instead of the item. The card is then placed into a container next to the barcode reader to indicate that it has been added to the list. When the item is purchased, the card is removed from the container and attached to the new item. The cards are cycled through the system and regulate the inventory. Only repeat purchase items are issued cards. The order quantity is then tuned over time to ensure items are always available and excess inventory does not accumulate. Here's the prototype card I made. I printed it out on my label printer, and because the cards are reused each time, I laminated it with a luggage tag. Now, how to attach it? I think tape is too weak for most applications. It's important that these cards don't get lost. I bought a pack of these tiny clothespins and attached them with a zip tie like this. The hinging action reduces stress and allows it to be attached more easily, I think. Now this system could very well work without a digital element. The cards in the container, after all, are the things that need to be ordered, so you could note down what they are and create your list for shopping that way. But we already use a digital shopping list, so why not just directly add the items? To accomplish this task, we're gonna need two elements, a container to hold the cards and a system to read the barcode and update the shopping list. To read the barcode, I have modified this off-the-shelf reader. I've tried a few approaches for scanning the cards, but I've settled on this one. The card will be partially inserted and held at a fixed distance with good illumination to ensure it scans without effort. To connect to the internet and provide power, I designed this schematic with an ESP8266. This Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller will allow me to communicate with the scanner and my shopping list. Now, to put it all together, I designed a circuit board and ordered it with today's sponsor, PCBWay. All I had to do was upload my files, and PCBWay had my boards drilled, plated, patterned, etched, masked, and silk screened, and shipped within 24 hours and at my doorstep two days later. The PCB looks great. They did a good job with the weird internal corner I needed on the board to fit around the scanner and center the power jack in the enclosure. PCBWay also offers 3D printing and machining services that I'm itching to try out. If you're interested, check out the link in the description, and thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now it's time to assemble the boards. With the new circuit, I like to build it up piece by piece, making sure that each section works. I had one small hiccup with the voltage regulator, but seems to all be working now. I designed the container in the shape of a shopping cart to signify its purpose. You can see I've got the board and the scanner mounted down in there. And the card will come in like this at the front and go into this slot. You can see it uh, 
come through there and then they'll get picked up by the scanner. Now it's time to write some firmware. When the card gets scanned, the data gets validated and parsed. With this established, the device connects to my home Wi-Fi network and accesses the internet. To get the list, the first thing we need to do is get a token. To do this, the device passes my credentials to the server. Token secured. Let's get that data. ESP8266 versus 100 kilobyte protobuf. Fight. Memory overflow. Protobuf wins. All right, the ESP8266 clearly does not have enough memory to just store the entire protobuf. So instead what we're gonna do is parse the data as it's streaming in for the important parts and discard the rest. Rematch. Fight. ESP8266 wins. With the scanned item identified in the list, we send an instruction with the item ID to the server to update it. All right, let's see what this process looks like. When an item gets below the quantity listed on the card, we take it out and scan it and place it in the cart and the list is updated. Then at the store, you check off the item when you get it in your cart and reattach the card as you put it away. Now we don't have to worry about running out of milk or buying too much. It's time to come clean. I didn't come up with this idea of attaching cards to items to regulate their inventory. It's actually an implementation of a system developed by Toyota in 1953 called Kanban. Kanban is used to this day to efficiently regulate manufacturing and ordering of parts in supply chains and factories around the world. Our kitchen is a manufacturing facility like any other. So when we had trouble keeping track of our inventory, I went with a tried and true solution. We've been running the system for a few months now and it's been consistently saving us time and without a doubt some money too since we only buy what we need. With this success, we've also expanded the card to non-food consumables where it has been keeping our cleaning supplies online. While these items aren't perishable like food, if they run out, they're a much bigger inconvenience. Let me know what you think and thanks for watching. <laughs>